Hello and welcome to the webinar. My name is Keith Barker and right out of the gate I'd like to answer a question that's probably on several people's minds and that's this. Hey Keith, I saw the vSphere 6.5 course at CBT Nuggets and that it includes hands-on labs which are fantastic for learning and why are you now doing a webinar on how to also build a lab in your home office or your home environment if you want to? And that my friend is a very good question. There are times when we may want to simulate, for example, our production environment, or we might want to try something unique. And in those cases, having a hands-on lab that's right there, ready to go, is a fantastic tool that we could use in addition to the hands-on labs that are provided as part of our vSphere course. So in this webinar, I want to walk you through some tips and techniques on how we can build a lab for vSphere and build the entire infrastructure, the entire lab, on a single computer to optimize the resources that we have in place. Let's begin. Now, one of the thoughts I had was we could use physical equipment for a lot of our devices. For example, we could get a physical computer for our ESXi1 device. We could get another physical computer for the host ESXi2. We could get another physical device for our Active Directory Windows server. We could get another physical device to be the home for our vCenter server. And if we want to set up some storage, we could have a separate, another physical device to provide network-based storage with iSCSI or NFS. Now, the trick with that, if we did all of that on separate physical gear, I see five different physical computers that we would need. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I don't have five separate, ready-to-go physical servers that I could just boot up and set up as part of a lab environment here in my home office. And secondly, even if I did, it's going to take a lot of power and it's going to generate a lot of heat as well. So that's our challenge. How do we get this lab environment up and running and working without having to have all of the physical gear in place? One solution is to set up a virtualized environment for our lab. And to do that, we are going to use a VMware Workstation as our Type 2 hypervisor and build our entire virtualized lab environment in VMware Workstation. So for example, here's our PC that we're currently going to be using. And that PC is running an application called VMware Workstation. And here's the details, just so you know what they are for this PC. It has an i7 Intel processor. It's got the virtualization technology from Intel enabled in the BIOS. That's important for this nested virtualization, which we're going to do to build our lab. If you have an AMD processor, they have a thing called AMD virtualization. Either way, you'd want to make sure that your computer supports the virtualization and that it's enabled in the BIOS. In addition, this PC that we're going to be running VMware Workstation on has 32 gigabytes of memory. Now, you could probably get away with less than that. So if you are looking at minimums, I would say you should have a minimum of at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and the more the better. The operating system running on this PC that's going to be running the VMware Workstation, I've currently got Windows 8.1 Professional. And if you're running Windows 7 or Windows 10 or some other flavor of Windows, as long as it's a 64-bit version of the operating system, you should be fine. And then in VMware Workstation, we can go ahead and create a virtual machine as an Active Directory domain controller. And we can create a virtual machine for our vCenter server. And we have some choices when it comes to that. For this vCenter server, we could go ahead and deploy it as its own virtual machine inside a VMware Workstation, we also have the option to go ahead and run it as a VM that's running as one of the VMs on one of our ESXi hosts. But as a bare minimum, we're going to be creating ESXi1 as a virtual machine inside of VMware Workstation, along with ESXi2 also as a virtual machine. And the whole purpose of doing this nested virtualization is that you and I, my friend, can build this entire lab on one physical computer using a Type 2 hypervisor, specifically VMware Workstation, instead of needing to have multiple physical machines to build our lab. The other thing I'd like you to be aware of right now is how I have my VMware Workstation networking configured. So on this PC, it has a network adapter, a NIC, a network interface card, and it is physically connected to the 192.168.1 network here in my home office. So in our network, that 192.168.1 network is going to be our management network that we're going to use to communicate between Active Directory, the vCenter server appliance once we get that set up, as well as ESXi1 and ESXi2. They will all be connected to this management network, which is 192.168.1.0. The virtual network editor, which I'll show you here in just a moment, which is part of VMware Workstation, I've currently got it set up so that the logical network interface of VMNet0 inside of VMware Workstation 
is bridged to that 192.168.1 network. So effectively, my physical network interface card on this PC running VMware Workstation is going to be in the same VLAN, the same IP subnet of 192.168.1.0 as the Active Directory server, the vCenter server appliance, and ESXi1 and ESXi2 as soon as those devices are configured inside of VMware Workstation. I've also got inside of VMware Workstation four additional networks. These are logical networks that are set up inside of VMware Workstation. Think of them as individual VLANs, individual subnets. And they are VMNet 1, 2, 3, and 4. And each one of those are host only. So that means they don't really connect to the outside world. They're just logical networks that are created, made up, if you will, in the mind of the VMware Workstation application that is running on this PC. And here's how we're going to use these logical networks. VMNet 1 is going to be used for storage. So I'll put a 1 right here next to storage. VMNet 2 is going to be used for a feature called vMotion, which is a really sweet feature that allows us to, on the fly, move a virtual machine from one host, for example, ESXi1, over to a second host, for example, ESXi2. And the vMotion network is a dedicated network that we're going to use for the transfer of that information between ESXi hosts. VMNet 3 is going to be used for one of our virtual machine networks. And VMNet 4 is going to be used for a second virtual machine network. So for example, if this virtual machine right here, let's say that's VM number 1, if we want to logically connect that to the VM network of 10.3.3.0, we can do that. We can do it in software. Or if we want to connect VM number 1 to the 10.4.4 network, once again, we can do that in software. So to help simplify that as well, as far as the numbering goes, VMNet 1 is going to support the 10.1.1 subnet. VMNet 2 is going to support the 10.2.2 subnet. VMNet 3 is going to support the 10.3.3 subnet. And VMNet 4 is going to support the 10.4.4 subnet. And one of the challenges is, by default, your VMware workstation, once you have that installed on this computer, where we're going to build this entire virtualized lab environment, it's not going to have all of these VMNets set up by default. We're going to need to go in to the virtual network editor as part of VMware Workstation and create any VM nets that don't exist by default that we want to use. So what I'd love to do right now is walk you through how to use the virtual network editor as part of VMware Workstation to modify and create the VM nets as we need them for the lab. So here is VMware Workstation. Now, if you don't have a copy or a license for a VMware Workstation, you can sign up for a free 30-day eval directly from VMware. If we go up to Edit, and from the dropdown, if we select the Virtual Network Editor, this is where we configure the networking portion inside of VMware Workstation. Now, initially, when the Virtual Network Editor comes up, we don't have the ability to change any settings. If we want the ability to change settings, we're going to click on this button down here that says Change Settings. The User Account Control feature, which I have enabled on this Windows 8.1 host, is asking me to confirm if I want to allow the Virtual Network Editor application to be able to make changes to this computer, and I'm going to click on Yes. And here it's showing me all of the VM nets that I have. So currently I've got VM net zero, which is bridged to my outside 192.168.1 network. That's a physical network associated with that VLAN. And then I have four additional networks, VM net one, two, three, and four. They're all configured as host only, meaning they only logically exist in the mind of VMware Workstation on this host computer. Then I've also associated the four subnets that we're going to be using in conjunction with those VLANs. So in your configuration, if you're looking at this and saying, wow, gosh, I don't have a VMNet 1 or a VMNet 2 or a VMNet 3 or a VMNet 4, how do I create them? The answer is simple. To create an additional network, we simply click on Add Network. Because I currently have VMNets 0 through 4, it's saying that VMNet 5 would be the next logical one. So I'll go ahead and click on OK to accept that. And by default, it chose this address of 192.168.230. Now, that's not the address that we want to use. So we can go down here to subnet IP and simply change it. So I'm going to put this as 10.5.5.0 with a 24-bit mask. I'm also going to say I do not want to use a local DHCP service to hand out IP addresses. I'm going to be using a Windows server that's also on the respective subnets to hand out IP addresses. Also, if you didn't want the host computer to have a logical interface on this new subnet, you can simply deselect the checkbox that says connect a host virtual adapter to this network. In my configuration, what I chose to do is I chose to allow it to have an interface on each of these additional networks. And so I did that for VMNet 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
and I just created five as a demonstration. We don't really need VMNet 5, so I'm going to select it and click on Remove Network. So VMNet 0 is bridged to my Ethernet network card on the VMware Workstation host, and that goes out to the 192.168.1.0 network. And that also has a 24-bit mask. And in my topology, because my home office network has that 192.168.1 network, I also have a default gateway at 192.168.1.1 that I can use on that network as a default gateway that also does network address translation and has reachability out to the public internet. So once we've made those changes, we can go ahead and click on OK. And now my VMware workstation has five VMnets, zero through four, with the first one being bridged and the remaining four VMnets are all representing four different separate VLANs and their associated IP subnets. So here are the action items, my friend. Number one, identify a computer that you're gonna use to run VMware Workstation. Make sure it has at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you can get up to 32, that's even better. Make sure that virtualization technology or the equivalent on the AMD side is enabled in the BIOS and have VMware Workstation installed. And then inside of VMware Workstation, use the virtual network editor to go ahead and set up these additional VMnets in preparation for deploying our lab inside of VMware Workstation. So I wanted to thank everybody for taking a few minutes to join us for this webinar today. If you don't want to create your own lab, remember we provide hands-on labs as part of the vSphere 6.5 course right here at CVT Nuggets as well. And either way you choose to do it is great. We wish you the best of success. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.